Alice Kuypers is the award-winning author of four young adult novels and two picture books. Her latest picture book, Violet and Victor Write the Most Fabulous Fairy Tale, reprises her characters and the format of her first picture book, Violet and Victor Write the Best Ever Bookworm Book. Recently, Alice Kuyper sat down to speak with me about her transition from young adult to picture book author. Alice, welcome. Thank you so much for talking with us today. Now, you published three young adult novels before tackling your first picture book. How was that transition for you as a writer? And was it very different uh, process for you? Did you have to learn a lot of new skills when you were writing your picture books? When I started writing years and years ago, I had the luck of always having lots of ideas for stories. And one of the great joys of being able to transition from YA to picture book and now to chapter book as well, is that some of the ideas I've had for stories in the past didn't work for the age range I was trying before. So I would start and feel like I ran out of steam and I wouldn't quite understand why. And what I've discovered by writing for the different age groups is that actually an idea that maybe feels like it might work as a YA book suddenly comes alive and feels full of life when tried for a different age range. So actually it wasn't a huge transition. It wasn't hugely difficult to try the different age range in terms of the text I was writing because the ideas that I had that hadn't been working for other age ranges suddenly felt like they were alive and full of life. That doesn't mean writing a picture book was easy. I had actually written maybe 30 before I published this first one and the first one, which is I think here, um, I wrote maybe 300 times. Like I did a lot of editing on it as well to get it right. It's interesting how much it taught me about writing for young adults too. The whole sense of having a complete piece, which you can see really well in a picture book because it's not as long, helped me really look at how to put together a whole piece for a young adult audience and notice, you know, the middle, it's totally not working. Or wow, the end, it seemed to be so great and actually is really flat because I'm able now to see that structure better and it helps me look at line by line stuff too because if I pull out a line and think how would that sound if it was all by itself with illustrations with it and then I think that would sound terrible <laughs> whereas in a picture book you can't get away with that so it helped me work harder with my YA stuff too. Uh -huh. That's interesting that's really interesting I never thought of that but it would sort of teach you the structure in a very compact way that you can mm -hmm. then use in longer works. I actually recommend even if people aren't hugely interested in writing and publishing picture books eventually, that trying it as a form is a really useful technique for a writer who is trying to work on a longer book because it shows you how to form and shape a book really clearly. And you can't hide behind lots of words. You can't mm -hmm. hide behind anything because it's just you and white space. My first YA book was mainly white space too. It, it was notes between a mother and a daughter that they left on the fridge door for each other. And I see in that archetypal picture book stuff too. I leave a lot of space for the imagination of the other. So I think it's always interested me, the different mm -hmm. forms. And now I feel really lucky to be able to be like, okay, this idea works. Mm, Try it as a picture book. Wow, terrible gritty YA who knew so yeah it's interesting how, how character is it's mainly character driven when I when I write I think very much in character and so if I just age my character or reduce their age I suddenly find the story that I'm trying to tell about them. Violet and Victor have such a natural believable sibling relationship how did you capture that without sounding condescending or artificial in your writing? Dialogue is one of the things that I have spent a long time working on as a writer. It did not come easily to me. It wasn't natural or fluid. In fact, even with my first book, my brother, when he read it, he said, I like it, but, you know, most characters kind of sound like you. <laughs> and I thought, oh, thanks. That's great. Um, but the art of writing dialogue, I think, is really to listen to how other people talk and notice when people use certain words or certain phrasing that really suits them. So Violet is very rambunctious in her voice and very commanding and very clear, but Victor certainly can hold his own. His interests are different to hers, but they have 
some aspects of their personality that tie together. So I listen to my children. I listen to kids at the school. I volunteer at least once a week, if not twice a week at my kids' schools um, to pay attention to other kids and hear how they talk and just rewriting. Lots and lots of rewriting, reading it aloud, trying it on the page, thinking, wow, that sounds terrible. Dialogue's often the thing I go back to, last of all, in a YA novel, and make sure that I've read every sentence aloud and check that every bit has a purpose and holds and is important on the page because sometimes you have big chunks of dialogue and you think, oh, wow, nothing happened in that. It still has to serve the story and keep it moving forward. The style of these books are written mainly in dialogue between Victor and Violet and also the text of the pages from whatever book they're writing in, mm -hmm. each, in each of your picture books. Now, the story within the story, the, the, the book within the book, is affected by what the twins are talking or often arguing about at that particular moment. How did you construct this idea? Um, did you come up with the general story first and then sort of whittle away what you didn't need? Or did you approach it you know, initially from, I'm going to have this structure and how am I going to write the book with this structure in it? I had, in the first book, there's a creature eating the books in the library. Mm -hmm. And that idea had been a picture book I had been playing with for a long time, but as a fully evolved book in and of itself. And it was nearly working. Like my agent was interested. I'd been rewriting it. I'd been honing it. The character was different, but she felt, and so did I, that something wasn't quite working, that it was a bit flat. And so I'd put it to one side. I was reading lots of picture books to my kids, reading them for my own pleasure, writing my YA stuff. And suddenly one night, just as I was falling asleep, Violet very clearly said, I want to write the best ever book in the whole entire universe. So it's weird and it's creepy, but that's actually what happened. I clearly heard Violet speak, and then I heard Victor replying that that was absolutely not what he wanted to do. I think as writers, if we stay open to the magic of those moments that don't come very often, there's a lot of graft that goes into those moments of pure excitement when you suddenly think, that's gonna make this book work. So the book had been redrafted lots and lots and lots and lots before Violet spoke to me but I think I was ready I'd done all the groundwork I had laid myself open and then just in that moment drifting off to sleep there she was hmm. Hmm. and Victor too <laughs> he was there too <laughs> so that's what happened but I think from a technical point of view the, the way to keep yourself open for that is to keep working all, all the time you earn the good days as a writer and those good days are rare and few and all the other days you just have to sit down and make the time to do the hard work where you feel like oh god I don't know what I'm doing and I don't know how to do this and this is difficult and this is terrible and this is the worst thing I've ever written or it's nearly working or it's not quite working and then those moments of inspiration they come Mm -hmm. and you're ready for them you don't have them and think oh I don't know what to do that because you think that's that's what I need I've been waiting for it and then you seize a hold of it that's wonderful so so patience is a huge virtue mm -hmm. in writing because mm -hmm. um, you know a lot of beginning authors that I work with they get their initial idea and they want to just run with it and not wait for that sort of inspiration and that development to happen yeah. Um, so is it hard to, to, when you know it's not quite ready yet, to wait? It is hard. I think one of the things that's nice when you write for children is you can then be working on a different project. Most of the children book authors who I know are often working on one or more projects at the time because then you can leave one project fallow and uh, knowing it's there, letting it play with that magical part of your head that has those ideas that help propel a story forward when I'm working with writers who are who are starting out there's an urgency to get that story down and get it out there in the world which is fine there's nothing wrong with that I feel that urgency too I've just learned to ignore it so I feel like yay I finished it I will read it to my kid <laughs> not share it with my agent yet or not share it with my first round of readers yet like they can hold off until I have read it a couple times and then left it for a bit and then tried again and for different books it's different wait times you know sometimes it just feels perfect and ready and you want to share it and then 
it comes home sad with its tail between its legs because actually it didn't work at all. And sometimes it, it, it flies. Sometimes you think it's not working like with life on the refrigerator door. Actually, I thought it wasn't working and I shared it with a friend and she was like, this, this is a great book. You need to, you need to keep going with this. Whereas I left that fallow for at least a year. And then I just thought, you know, what do I do with this? How do I fix it? And she was like, it, it doesn't really need fixing. It's, it's, it's well on its way. So sometimes you're wrong as a writer too. You're not an editor. So that, that's an interesting thing to learn. Um, I think it's patience. It's respect for the fact that the process does take a really long time and that that's okay. That once the book is out there, it's done. And then you can't change it. So you do not want to look at it three years later and think, oh my goodness, I could have done that so much better. That idea, it only exists once in one book, so why waste it? Now, when you submitted this manuscript, did you include illustration notes or did the text itself have to give the illustrator enough to work with? This is uh, an issue a lot of writers struggle with, especially when their book has a, a kind of a different concept to it. Like, like yours did. So, so how did you present the manuscript? So I am visually lacking in any skill. And I know that about myself. I am good at letting somebody else do what they will with my project. When you're working with a traditional publisher, what they're going to want to say to you is, do you have any ideas for an illustrator? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Those are interesting. That doesn't work at all with what we think. We would like to try some of these illustrators. Maybe we'll look at one of yours. Then they'll approach an illustrator and then that illustrator may or may not come on board. And then that illustrator works with the book without your input. Mm -hmm. So when I first started working with Little Brown with Violet and Victor write the best ever bookworm book, I wrote to my illustrator, Bethany Mogia, and said, hi, nice to meet you through Facebook. And I had a phone call from Little Brown, which is not usual when you're living in Saskatoon in the prairies to have New York calling you up and said, uh, Alice, no, 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 no communication with the illustrator. None, none. That is not through us. And I was a bit perplexed, but not bothered. I thought, okay, fair enough. And as time went by, it became apparent to me that absolutely, if I was going to start having my input, then I wouldn't be letting Bethany have her own creative space to do what she wanted to do i could just as easily have been writing through facebook saying uh bethany i don't like it i want violet to look like this or i want this or i need the book to change and go this way which would be fine if i had any skill in that department but i don't now what i notice quite often with people who are writing picture books is that they have lots of ideas about the artwork and some of them have more visual ability than I do. They have skill in that department. And so then there's choices to be made. Either they can work as an illustrator themselves and illustrate their own work, or they can go a self-publishing route where they can work much more closely with an illustrator and have much more input. Or they're maybe with a traditional publisher who is more willing to accept input from them because they know that they've got more of a sense of these things. Mm -hmm. So for me, in answer to your question, I'm a writer, period. I send a text, period. Very occasionally, if something needs to be added as an art note because it isn't apparent at all on the page, I will put in brackets art note, but I keep that as short as possible mm -hmm. because I'm okay with letting somebody else just go with their illustrations. Now I've been really lucky. My illustrator is extraordinary. She's so talented and she's done such a beautiful job. I have had friends who have worked with illustrators and that has not been so successful and it may be that I would feel more like I needed to control the project if that had been my experience. But my experience has been that I let go, I backed off, and the publisher and the illustrator made the most extraordinary book with my very few words. So that was really lucky for me. Mm -hmm. So I submitted just the text. Okay. And I think a lot of beginning writers really don't understand that Picture books are such a collaborative effort, mm -hmm. and the writing is really only half the book. Mm -hmm. And once you've completed your half, you are done. And that's, that's a hard thing to, to sort of internalize at the beginning, but if you can, you will have a much better experience because you're right, the illustrator is, 
is talented visually mm -hmm. and you have to let them do their job to the best well, of their I, th I think Bethany's published like five or six other books and she's worked as the writer and the illustrator so she's done that mm -hmm. and so this is one of the few times she's worked as the illustrator but not the writer and that was a new experience for her to let the text be somebody else's and to to let go of that aspect and to let the storytelling be my part and to add her own level of storytelling only in the visual sense mm -hmm. and so that I think was really interesting for her to mm -hmm. the process mm -hmm. one of the things in the second book is that she was working making a paper mache cockatoo and she had all these files on her computer and one of them was called cockatoo too and from that she sparked off an idea to write her own picture book which I think is maybe the sixth picture book she's published as author illustrator and so she just had that published uh, two weeks or three weeks before Violet and Victor came out so it's interesting how she opened herself up to that process of working with me and then from that her own unique project came to so mm -hmm. it can be a good thing um collaboration it can be really difficult it can so mm -hmm. i think it's something that each person has to know what their own limits are going to be like what's going to work for me how can i do this mm -hmm. can i just let go am i okay with that but i mean i i can't even draw a stick person artistically. <laughs> like i i know that this is not my skill in fact it held me back from writing picture books for a long time that I didn't have that visual ability because it made me feel like I couldn't even begin to tell some mm -hmm. of the stories I wanted to tell. Mm -hmm. One of the things I do do is make a dummy book. So I take eight sheets of paper and I fold them in half and I stitch them and then I cut the text out and I put it on the pages, but I only look at the blank space. I still don't fill it even in my imagination with image. I just look at the words, how they fall, how they space. So, sometimes when I write the text out to submit I would have what looked like page breaks mm -hmm. but normally by the time it gets to the stage where a publisher is looking at it those have gone and and I think there's a certain amount of trust you have to have in the editor that they are going to choose mm -hmm. the illustrator that is right for your book and and that mm -hmm. is their expertise and you have to allow them to do their job as well I think it's useful for anyone to have read lots of picture books and to be able to say, these artists really inspire me. This is the type of look that I could see working well with my book. Because then your editor, if they're a good editor, is going to take that on board. Mm -hmm. So I was able to say, you know, these are five or six illustrators I really like. And Bethany was one of the people who I had mentioned. Hmm. Um, because I really like her work. I felt like it had the right mix of whimsy and color and charm and humor and texture. So I had thought about those things, but I was also okay to let that go too. So mm -hmm. if, Bethany, if Bethany hadn't been able to take on the project, she was the third illustrator they approached. Um, and if she had said no, they would have moved on to the next one. And that may or may not have been a fantastic thing too. Mm -hmm. but again, because I have lots of different projects going on, I'm, I'm okay with, being able to give one space and see how it evolves. Mm -hmm. So it's not my only egg. I'm not just like this one picture book and it means everything to me. They do mean everything to me, each of my books, but I can also look and let go and say, yeah, okay, that was, that was an interesting process. And now I need to turn my attention to this one too. Mm -hmm. My agent does actually ask me sometimes to give extensive art notes for her so mm -hmm. she can, See what she thinks that's now I've been doing it a little bit longer just so I can say you know this is what I think would happen on this page and then what we often do is look back at the text and see what can be pulled out so we look at the art notes and see okay do we need to say she's jumping in a puddle here or could we pull that out and just give that space like which bits of storytelling and which bits of me trying to write too much about what should be happening uh -huh. so jumping in a puddle is an interesting one because and it's one I just was thinking about with the new submission because I am trying to tell the artist what I want to see with that and I don't know if it's telling the story so how do I pull out of those moments and leave the space but still keep the story alive hmm. interesting Mm -hmm. That would be an interesting exercise for writers to do for themselves yep. before they submit the manuscript and, of course, then pull all those art notes out of the manuscript. But mm -hmm. you're right. It shows you 
what what areas you're trying to control the illustrations without even knowing about it. so you know she's she's wearing a blue coat well actually it, it, unless it has to be blue for your storytelling do you need to tell the color or could the illustrator choose her own color based on her own or his own palette right so those moments you can look through and say in this she's mm -hmm. wearing a blue coat and she's doing this and then like huh i don't know that's me influencing quite a lot and trying to push the art note where it needs to be mm -hmm. uh, it may be that you're determine that your character is a bear but your illustrator decides that they could be a pig and again then if it really is important to you that it's a bear then you can you can go through self-publishing and find your own illustrator and work with an illustrator and really have much more much more creative control so any final words of wisdom here for aspiring picture book writers i think it's really important to remember how fun it is as a job um taking taking time to enjoy the process taking time to uh, share it with children if you can if there's any way you can volunteer at a local school or bring in your manuscript to read to a classroom of kids just to get that feedback from from a room full of kids i cannot recommend that more highly i would say most schools are probably very open to people volunteering to coming in to read and I think that has been one of the most rewarding aspects of my job, even with the books that don't end up getting published, just sharing them with a the classroom and seeing how they work and meeting kids who are excited about reading. One of the things actually that you guys do at CBI really well is remind each of us how important it is to keep that at the heart of what we're doing. I'm not writing this for me. I'm writing it for someone who is coming to reading for the first time, possibly. They are about to enter the world of written word and that, is something that has always given me great joy and so that is what I'm seeking. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And do you find when you read your manuscripts to kids at school, they don't have pictures in them? Are the kids able to imagine and follow the story even without the pictures? Yeah, and sometimes we hand out pages, you know, with one sheet with the text underneath and they can draw their own pictures. I sometimes do that with my kids at home too. Um, it's a really fun way to let them be part of the process they're always really interested how does a book get made how and so i say well but hopefully one day this will find an illustrator and why don't you have a turn and here's the page from the book and you give your illustration so i have some great illustrations from kids upstairs okay. in my office yeah thank you alice for all your wonderful information and fabulous tips on writing for children I urge everyone to go to alicekuypers.com and check out all her books especially her newest picture book violet and victor write the most fabulous fairy tale.